it's so difficult to talk about if you haven't got the, the, the right people to talk to it about. I come from, well I do, it's a working class mm. background. My granddad worked in the pit. My dad started as an electrical engineer. I've been brought up that we don't express emotion because I've never told anyone that I've had suicidal thoughts. Mm. I've told them recently, but for a long, long time. It, as a man, you just don't. I grew up uh, playing a uh, high level of sport, uh, both within school and county level. So again, I was exposed to that quite unforgiving environment of a sports dressing room. Yeah. You multiply that as well with kind of like, you know, a room full of adolescent young males. It just wasn't a place where you expressed or admitted any type of weakness. So all I did, I, I started internalizing and yeah. um, hiding everything from then. You just, you just showed up, you smiled, um, and you just, you just got on with it. You developed this then, facade, don't you? Yeah. yeah, and I think it's a bit of a West Indian thing as well. It's these things stay within four walls. So yeah. I just, I just got used to, mm. again, that whole internalizing. You don't talk about yeah. this to the outside world. Yeah. This is something we deal with, for one of a business way of putting it, we deal with this in house. Yeah. There are instances where, absolutely, where you know males will have a set set of challenges, and they'll be ashamed to open up, and they'll be ashamed to open up and admit they are the crutch to the family. They will take it on themselves to be the crutch to the family, the breadwinner, the support. You know, the the, the, the you know the main man in the house, and I think it brings its own pressures. I come from a a a, 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 a family, a mother and a father who divorced when I was four both with their own mental health issues. My dad was quite open and honest about it. He would say, I am going to kill myself. I wish I had the bottle to kill myself. Uh, when my mum was just completely this nervous wreck of, of, of kind of um, re kept in, restricted kind of frailty that she had that kind of lived all within her head. How, how does that affect you as a young as a young guy, you're kind of like six, seven years old, when you hear your dad saying, "I want to, you know, I, I, I want to kill myself," well, I can't, I can't begin to imagine. It, it just seems, Ron, that at the time, it, it was just normal. It was the way life was, and over the years, you can kind of become a, a default person of what what you experience as a child, and that that becomes you. And really, didn't take much by the time I got to my early to mid twenties to kind of set me off on my my own issues because it was it was normal for, for that to happen. I got to a stage where, you know, I almost went the other way. I take responsibility for everything. I, yeah. I refuse to yeah. put blame on even things which actually have had a a very big impact on your life. So I always felt if you turn around and say that your mental illness is because of your parents' divorce. You're, you're saying that none of it's your fault, and it's all your parents, all, yeah. all your parents' fault. Um, but it was, you know, when I started seeing a counsellor and begun to unpack everything, yeah, absolutely. You know, he said, "Look, just look at it in plain, obvious fact. You, it started unraveling for you. The depression kicked yeah, in at a long that time. time. Ago. So, you know." Stop being so hard on yourself and actually un yeah, understand. That sounds, I think we it's, can all. It's all a case of not being hard on yourself. It's exactly yeah. that, you know, when the, the, my consultant pointed out key events and say, the key events are yeah. your manic triggers, Lee. Yeah. You know, you, I, I put them they're together, they sit in a timeline. I, I couldn't have this conversation in my, with my mates in the pub. Couldn't do it because you yeah. couldn't say to him, how are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you had a good yeah. day? I must, admit, I must admit, I'm not the normal man. I just happen to have a few pals I could do. Um, but I can, I, listen, I can totally relate to that. I mean, it's more by you know, coincidence than anything else. I can, I can do now, yeah. but back, back then... I, I think the, op, the, the big reason why a lot of my mates can talk to me now is because I opened up with them first, and it, it's about making the first move, and I needed to talk to people. And, you know, you probably do find that the more you talk to people, the more you, you, you get it back.